Okay, let's welcome you back to Morning Live here on SABC2 and thank you so much for staying with us here on the program. An estimated of 1 in 300 males are born with a hyspospedia, hypospedia, which is a male genitalia defect and that happens every year. Hypospedia is a birth defect in which the urinary opening is not at the usual location on the head of the male genitalia. Approximately 50% of operations done at the urology hospital in Pretoria are the redos of the previous unsuccessful operations that were done elsewhere. Joining us from our Pretoria studios this morning is Dr. Gabo Ijani. Dr. Ijani, good morning to you and welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Palisa, and thank you for having me. Thank you very much indeed for your time, Dr. Ijani. Can you just elaborate a bit more on hypospadia? What exactly is hypospadia? Uh, you, you, you put it very well in your intro. Uh, it is a congenital uh, defect, uh, meaning that it is something that uh, young boys are born with. Uh, the word hypospadia is just borrowed from Greek, just like many things in medicine, uh, to just to confuse the nation, I guess. <laughs> However, this uh, condition is associated with uh, three pinnacle components. We have a penis that is usually uh, crooked in shape uh, instead of being straight. And then instead of the opening being at the tip of the penis, it is underneath the penis, meaning when the child passes urine, it is spraying from underneath, pointing downward instead of pointing to the front. And because the underneath of the skin is cleft, the false skin is not completely formed. And then it creates what we call a dorsal hood, meaning it creates a cap on top of the head of the penis. This obviously is both cosmetic and functionally abnormal. Okay, but then how prevalent is it here in South Africa? How many cases do we have maybe every year here in South Africa? It, it is unfortunate with many things that uh, in South Africa we don't keep uh, very data of uh, our own statistics and, and disease profiles. Uh, there are ad hoc studies and reports, but we commonly do see it a lot, especially in uh, tertiary centers and in specialist uh, urological services like the urology hospital. Uh, internationally though, uh, like you said, it's about one in 300, but that was a very long time ago. Over the past years, we have realized a trend of uh, increase in that incident to almost one in 150 with uh, special areas where the conditions are more aggregated. Uh, it is something that usually should be picked at birth because uh, looking at the genitalia, it usually is not looking correct even to the uneducated eye. Okay, now, and I'm listening to you as you're explaining to, to us what exactly hypospadia is. And I, I believe it's not just a physical trauma, but it's got something to do with psychology as well. Yes, uh, you, you can imagine the functions of the penis uh, literally uh, very simple. We want it to be able to point so that uh, when one wants to pass water or urinate, they are able to point it in the right direction, the urinal or wherever it is where they may be standing. And secondly, it's also a, uh, an organ for sexuality and reproduction, meaning that if it is not pointed, it is therefore unable to be pointed in the right direction and hence it become functionally impossible to be intimate and to reproduce. Therefore, and men be men, there is a complex about uh, the penises and the organs. So people have got a focus on it that uh, if one is born with that, they suffer not only severe psychological trauma, embarrassment, sexual dysfunctions, but they also are reserved and they feel incomplete. It is also important to notice that uh, this need to be corrected surgically early on in life. And the surgery is highly complex and highly technical. And very, very few urologists can do this as best as they can be done anywhere else in the world. Hence the high rate of redo that we see uh, at the urology hospital in Pretoria. Mm. And what happens if the operation is not done? 
if the operation is not done, nothing really happens except that uh, uh, in very mild form rather, because there are different degrees, if I may say so, a very mild form of hypospadia, somebody can remain fully functional, fully sexual, and a fully reproductive man without even ever being aware that they do have an abnormality there until somebody brings it to their attention that, hey, buddy, you look slightly different than I do. Mm. However, in a very severe form, the penis is so crooked that it is functionally impossible for penetrative sexual intercourse and for pointing urine in the right direction with urination. And hence, somebody will then live a bit of a secluded life. Mm. So this is an important aspect that uh, need to be looked at. There is also an association with other syndromes, which are abnormal medical condition, which can be fatal and can be passed on to other uh, uh, offsprings, etc. And it can also be an indicator that there is possible underlying of what used to be commonly called intersex disorder, meaning that a genetic female develop like a physical man. And we need to be able to pick up those. So it is something that shouldn't be taken lightly. When it notice, one do need to consult a specialist. And then we need to be able to have an assessment, do necessary tests when indicated, plan the corrective surgery, and this should be done very early on in life. All right, Dr. Ejali, that's where we're going to leave it. But thank you very much for clarifying the matter for us. All right, there you have it. We are speaking to Dr. Abo Ijani this morning, discussing uh, quite a deep issue here, hypospadia. I believe that you get to understand what it means and, you know, to detect it as early as you can if you have a son. We're taking a break. When we come...